financial center. The experts warn that Hong Kong could lose that status if it does not develop new financial services and offer more mainland currency products to investors. ATV's Anne-Marie Sim reports. How does Hong Kong fit into the mainland's future almost 10 years since the handover? After four months, four focus groups appointed by the government last September have proposed more than 200 measures aimed at answering that question. In its action agenda, the group set out 50 recommendations and 207 measures, some of which Chief Executive so Donald Jung says he's discussed with mainland officials during his recent duty visit to Beijing. The four focus groups covered the financial services, trade, logistics, infrastructure and professional services sectors. Included in the group's blueprint is a proposal to establish a high-level committee to tackle air pollution, which could be headed by the chief executive or chief secretary. The report also suggested providing help to Hong Kong-owned factories in Guangdong to meet environmental standards and reduce air pollution. The team also said Hong Kong should be further developed as China's financial center of global significance and serve as a testing ground for the mainland currency to become fully convertible. The experts called on both sides to maximize the use of Hong Kong for overseas financial activities. With the rapid development of the mainland economy, we believe that there is a great urgency for China to develop an international financial center of global significance within its own border. The window of, of opportunity will not last forever. If we do not act now, inertia will set in. The team also proposed integrating Hong Kong and China's stock markets and to relax rules on mainland firms raising funds through listing in Hong Kong. Turning overseas, two of Saddam Hussein's henchmen were hanged in Iraq before dawn today for crimes against humanity. One of them, Saddam's half-brother, was beheaded during the hanging prompting Amnesty International to condemn the executions as a brutal violation of the right to life. ATV's Mary Lloyd has the story. Bazan Ibrahim al-Tikriti and Awad Ahmed al-Banda may not have been as widely vilified as former dictator Saddam Hussein, but they were found as guilty as him of crimes against humanity and today suffered the same fate. Bazan Ibrahim was Saddam's half-brother and the head of Iraq's intelligence service in the 1980s. He was known as Saddam's torturer-in-chief and was once one of the most feared men in Iraq. During his execution today, his head was ripped off, prompting the Iraqi government to go on the defensive and insist he was not mistreated the way Saddam was, taunted and tormented by his executioners during his final moments. Bazan's co-defendant, Awad Hamed al-Banda, was head of Iraq's Revolutionary Court, which was central to the crimes all three were convicted for. Together with five other men, four of whom were handed prison terms and one who was acquitted, Saddam and his cohorts were found guilty of involvement in the killing of 148 men and boys that the Revolutionary Court sentenced to death after a failed assassination attempt on Saddam in the town of Dujail in 1982. Severe criticism of the way Saddam's execution was handled flooded in from all over the world and the United Nations had appealed to Iraq to reconsider the remaining two death sentences. The pair were reportedly executed in the same Saddam-era military intelligence headquarters building in Baghdad where the former president was hanged. Mary Lloyd, ATV News. Researchers in Britain have reportedly developed genetically modified chickens that can lay eggs which contain the proteins required to develop anti-cancer drugs. The same research center in Scotland that first cloned Dolly the sheep claims it produced five generations of chickens that can produce useful levels of proteins for the development of life-saving cancer drugs in their eggs. It may be another decade before a medicine is fully developed. Premier Wen Jiabao has assured China's neighbors they have nothing to fear about the mainland's rapid rise to power. His comments were made at a summit in the Philippines where regional leaders signed an agreement that commits them to work together at saving energy and developing new supplies. Mary Lloyd reports. Some of the most polluted nations on earth were represented at the meeting, which wrapped up today with the leaders of ASEAN and Australia, New Zealand, India, Japan, China and South Korea dressing in traditional Filipino shirts for a group photo. The countries there also represent one-fifth of global trade and half the world's population, so it's not surprising that keeping energy supplies stable topped their agenda. The effect consuming all that energy has on the environment was less of a concern, though. Premier Wen Jiabao, whose country is one of the world's greatest energy consumers called on the region to develop a new thinking to meet future energy demands. China, he said, is prepared to play an active role in international cooperation to ensure the stability of the global and regional energy market. 
The Cebu Declaration on East Asian Energy Security calls for improvements to be made in energy efficiency and the region's dependency on fossil fuels, while urging the expansion of renewable energy systems and biofuel production. But while it supports a move away from costly and dirty crude oil to help reduce global warming, it stopped short of committing nations to fixed targets. At the 16-country East Asia Summit, Wen also gave an assurance to China's neighbors that his country will stay good friends with them. He told them they should not see China as a threat as it grows more powerful because it's committed to peace and wants to focus more on development and reducing the wealth gap. Mary Lloyd, ATV News. A deadly fire tore through an apartment building in the U.S. over the weekend, killing at least seven people. Firefighters have warned the death toll could rise as they search the rubble for bodies. Firefighters were in for a tough battle as flames engulfed the top floor of the five-story building in Huntington, West Virginia. Fourteen people were rescued. The lucky ones were able to escape unhurt. Firefighters discovered three bodies, including that of a child, on the top floor. The search for trapped residents had to be called off overnight for fear parts of the building could collapse. Four more bodies were found in the morning. Firefighters said they could not get to some parts of the top floor because the roof had collapsed. Investigators estimated it could take days to find out the cause of the blaze, which began in a second floor apartment. The flames spread from there and shot up utility access channels to the upper floors. Back in Hong Kong, more than 100 HSBC staff are likely to lose their jobs under a voluntary resignation scheme proposed by the banking giant. HSBC is insisting it's not forcing anyone to leave. ATV Zednetsay reports. The voluntary resignation scheme was offered to about 120 information and technology staff this morning. HSBC is offering about 11 months' salary as compensation to those who accept the plan before the 24th of this month. A bank spokesman insisted the scheme is not to lay off anyone because the final decision has been left to the staff themselves. The bank has more than 2,000 employees in its IT section, 5% of its total workforce. HSBC did not rule out offering the scheme to more staff in future. Staff unions are not happy. Union spokesman Gordon Cho said the bank is effectively sacking staff at a time when it's making big profits. City University academic Stephen Jung warned that other organizations may follow HSBC's move to cut down their workforce. But he believes Hong Kong's booming economy means there's enough room for information technology professionals. Ed Nedze, ATV News. Police Commissioner Dick Lee today completed his last day on the job after more than three decades of service. The force held a ceremony to bid him goodbye and his deputy, Tanking Shing, will take over the post tomorrow. ATV's Nancy Ju reports. More than a hundred people turned out at the police headquarters in Wan Chai this morning for the Guard of Honor ceremony for retiring police chief Dick Lee. Among those attending the ceremony were senior serving and retired police officers. Former Security Secretary Regina Ip, who resigned months before Lee took over the top job in December 2003, was also there. Lee, who is 57, joined the force in 1972 as a probationary inspector after graduating from the Chinese University of Hong Kong with a history degree. He took over from Zhang Yanpui and became the first Chinese police commissioner with a bachelor's degree and was later awarded the chief executive's commendation. One of his current deputies, Tang Qingxing, will take over from Li as the police chief tomorrow. Nancy Chu, ATV News. Taipo District Council Chairman Cheng Chunping and his brother were found not guilty today after answering charges of making false statements in connection with a piece of land they rented out. ATV's Leslie Tang reports. Chairman of the Taipo District Council Cheng Chunping and his brother Cheng Chun Hong were free men today after being cleared of fraud charges by the district court. They were accused of making false claims in renting out government land. <laughs> Councillor Chang said he respected the judgment and promised to handle land rentals more carefully in future. 
District Court Judge Douglas Yao said the defendants had not expected the tenant to extend his use of a rented warehouse onto surrounding government land. Yao said the tenant renting the warehouse was aware that the surrounding land was not part of the deal, and therefore no fraud was committed. The Chang brothers were accused of falsely claiming that they had the right to lease government land in Taipo, charging a garage operator about $1.18 million in rent. Leslie Tang, ATV News. Health authorities are warning travelers to Thailand about an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the beach resort of Phuket. The Center for Health Protection says four European tourists became ill after staying in the Phuket Grand Tropicana Hotel on Patong Beach last month. People suffering from Legionnaire's disease mostly develop symptoms of pneumonia. It's caused by a type of bacteria that thrives in man-made water systems such as spas. Time now for sports. David Beckham is still getting his $60 million a year salary, but it's for warming the seats instead of scoring goals. Even so, Real Madrid won its first match since Beckham signed for the U.S. team, Los Angeles Galaxy. Madrid entered a new era when they faced Real Zaragoza. Hours after being told by coach Fabio Capello that he'd never play for the team again, David Beckham was getting used to seeing out his contract from the VIP seats. He looked on as goalkeeper Iker Casillas kept Madrid in the game. Capello brought on Robinho before the break and the Brazilian star was soon in the action, helping to set up Ruud van Nistelrooy for what turned out to be the only goal of the game. Madrid's first win in four games lifted them level on points with second placed Barcelona. Barcelona wasted a chance to go top of the table when they came unstruck against city rivals Espanol. Barca dominated the early stages, but it was Espanol who opened the scoring through Luis Garcia in the 31st minute. Javier Saviola came on at halftime and leveled the score on the hour. Espanol were back in front five minutes later when an unmarked Raul Tamudo headed home from close range. Barca coach Frank Reichart was not impressed. Espinal sealed a 3-1 win in injury time to moving up to 10th in the standings. Any hopes Sevilla had of extending their lead were dashed by struggling Mallorca. Sevilla got on the score sheet first when they won a controversial penalty. Frederick Canute converted the spot kick. The game swung Mallorca's way after the break when Sevilla failed to clear a corner and Jose Carlos Nunez volleyed in the equalizer. Mallorca took the lead in the 61st minute after a mix-up in the Sevilla defense. Maxi Lopez was given the simple task of scoring the winner to help them climb four points clear of the relegation zone, while only two points separate the top three sides. In other sports news, the Bears and Patriots are through to their conference championships. Some holes. Chicago Bears quarterback Rex Grossman silences critics throwing for 282 yards, including a touchdown pass to Bernard Verain. But the game was decided by a Robbie Gould field goal 458 into overtime, which sealed the 27-24 win. The Bears will face New Orleans in the conference final this weekend. In the American Conference, the top-seeded San Diego Chargers fell to the New England Patriots. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady led the Chargers to a 24-21 triumph. The Patriots face Indianapolis for a passage to the Super Bowl on February 4th. Paul Goidos emerged from the shadows to win the Sony Open in Hawaii and end an 11-year title drought on the PGA Tour. He birdied three of the last four holes on his way to a one-stroke victory over Charles Howell III and England's Luke Donald. And Ferrari has unveiled its new Formula One car it hopes will regain the team's supremacy. It is called the F2007 and Philippe Massa and Kimi Raikkonen will be behind the wheel when the new season gets underway in Australia on March 18th. Time now for Star Wars and this week Anne-Marie Sim has a special treat. In an exclusive interview with celebrity Japanese chef Nobu Matsuhisa who has just opened his new upscale restaurant in Hong Kong, she talks to him about sushi and celebrities. There is no Asian chef as famous as Nobuyuki Matsuhisa, known universally as Nobu. Wasabi, mm -hmm. nice here. It's easy. This celebrity Japanese chef lends his name to a chain of Nobu restaurants in places like New York, Los Angeles, London, Milan and Tokyo, which have all become favorite celebrity hangouts. There's a rumor that the supermodel, Kate Moss, uh -huh. she came to eat here the other night. Yeah, she was here a couple true? of days ago, yeah. Well, what did she order? She doesn't eat much because of skinny, she's a model, she's an actress, you know. <laughs> But uh, she loves my food. And now there's a Nobu Hong Kong at the Intercontinental Hotel in Chimsa Choi, which was designed under the direction of none other than Master
master architect David Rockwell. This is very important for the next socialize. Yeah. Actor Robert De Niro is Chef Nobu's business partner, and he's rumored to be coming here for the restaurant's grand opening sometime after Chinese New Year. What kind of a business partner is he? Does he interfere in the menu choices, or does he leave that all to you? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't know anything about the menus. <laughs> like he loves the food, but uh, sometimes he advised, "Oh no, I love this. I love this." You right. know, but uh, he doesn't involve to the menus anything. Right. He never stays the kitchen. <laughs> he leaves the kitchen to you. <laughs> yeah, I I stay in the kitchen, but he stays the screens. Uh, this is, you know, it's a Japanese stock. So, what inspired you to become a chef? Well, the sushi chef was my dreams because I was a kid. Yeah. My brother took the sushi restaurants. That was your dream. Yeah, it was my dream. Now it's dream come true. <laughs> exactly. Your Peruvian Japanese fusion as well has become very widely copied in the world. Why Peruvian? After the Japan, I studied the seven years mm -hmm. in the sushi restaurant in Tokyo. So after seven years, I went to the Peru, opening the Japanese restaurant. Right, right. So. I learned lots from uh, the Peruvian influence from Peru. Chef Nobu even showed me the proper way to eat sushi. Just touch for the soy sauce on the fish, then That's the one way bite. To do it. One bite. <laughs> I better take a small piece then. <laughs> no, this is. Are you sure? Perfect the size of one bite, yeah. Okay, here we go. So the, turn it over the fish one. Mm hmm. Okay. Just exactly, yep. And then one bite. Yep. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> now the weather forecast for the next few days. Tomorrow is going to be sunny, but the visibility will be low. The rest of the week is expected to be cloudy with light rain. Here's a look at the weather in other parts of the world.